Now, please open your scriptures with me to the book of Luke chapter 19. I, I read 10 to 13. Luke 19, 10 to 13. Uh, let me also appreciate the King Klembaye who found time to worship with our new church in Abuja last Sunday. Let's appreciate him. The King Klembaye, thank you so much for encouraging that young church in Abuja. We appreciate you. Luke 19, 10 to 13. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was near to Jerusalem. And because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Can we read 13 together? And he called his 10 servants and delivered them 10 pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. And the message is occupy for him. Occupy for him. It's time to occupy for the master. In the course of uh, the operation push, we have uh, explained what the word occupy means. That it is a military term. And that military term means to take possession or to take control of a conquered territory. And you know, Jesus was teaching, and then in the course of his teaching, he introduced the reason why he came, his purpose for coming to the earth. He said, the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. In other words, he told his audience, the reason why he came is to seek and to save. And the Bible says when they had these things, because it was something that was opposed to their own mindset, what they were thinking was that before them was the one who had come to rescue them from the dominion of the Roman government. They were looking at him as one who was going to be a political leader, one who was going to, you know, subjugate the Roman government and then declare a nation of Israel as a free state. But then Jesus knew that they misunderstood the purpose of his coming. And he knew that even though he was teaching them, letting them know the reason why he came, and they were still having it in their mind. How do we capture this person? How do we make him to become our king? How do we make him to realize that actually what we want him to do is to be our political leader? And then Jesus now told them a parable in order to redirect them to what he came to do. And I said, a certain nobleman. You know, anytime Jesus is giving a parable, uh, you know, you need to look at it that he's always giving a parable around himself around his purpose, the reason why he came. And then he gave them that parable. He said, a certain noble man. Now, he was going to go to a far country and to receive for himself a kingdom and return. Now, please take note of that. He was going to go into a far country. In explaining that parable, Jesus was talking about himself, I'm going back to heaven. And when I get there, I'm going to receive a kingdom. I want you to know that kingdom, Revelation 11, 15. Revelation 11, 15. Can we have it? Revelation 11, 15. Can we read that together? And the seven angels sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And what will happen? And it shall reign forever and ever. 
So he said a certain noble man going to a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return that a time is coming that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdom of the dear son of God. Then he will return to reign forever and ever. And then he now told them. But before he embarked on that journey, he called his servants together and then gave them 10 pounds. Say, I'm going to a far country. I want to receive a kingdom and I'm coming back. But then, while I am away, I'm giving you this. Take possession of it until I come. Take control of it until I come. In other words, I have come. And what I have done is that the one who has been in control of your life, who has been in control of everything, who actually stole your mandate in the garden and made the kingdom of this world to become his own kingdom. I, I, before I go to this far country, I will make sure that this kingdom is taken away from him. Now, when he now gave his servant 10 pounds, you know, he was talking about a parable. Before Jesus left, you know, he said all the power in heaven and on earth, what has happened to them have been handed over to him. Matthew chapter eight, uh, 28. All the power in heaven and earth have been given to him. And then he now told his disciple, I'm giving you that same power. And I want you to go out and preach the gospel everywhere, everywhere. Why? Because Satan is no longer in control. I have taken dominion from Satan. Because Colossians chapter 2, you know, 14 and 15, that Jesus, when he went to the cross, what he did to the devil, blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that were against us, which were contrary to us. Now he took them out of the way, nailing them to his cross. And in verse 15, heaven spoil. Not that he will one day spoil. Heaven spoil principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Praise the Lord. Now, please, I want you to follow me well. Look at Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Can we read it together? Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Go again to Matthew 28 verse 18. Matthew 8, 28, 18. Now after Jesus, Matthew 28, not Malachi. Matthew 28 verse 18. Matthew 28. Can we read it together? And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me. Where? In heaven and on earth. And when you relate that to that Luke 10, 19, he said, Because all power has been given to me, I give it to you. And then now say, Occupy until I come. In other words, I have conquered this territory for you. Now I want you to take possession of it. Be in charge. Take control of it until I come back. Another word that occupy means is said, go and make massive profits with what I have delivered to you. Go and make massive profits. Engage in an exchange that will lead to massive profit. Now I have given this to you. Make sure you make profit out of it. Make profit out of it. Every area that you go, continue to conquer because I've conquered for you. Make massive profit out of it. And, and that's why when he gave those 10 servants, I'm still looking at the nobleman, and the master of the servants came back. And one of the servants only said, Master, what you gave me, I kept it intact. Now that you are back, please take back your, your property. You know, the master was angry. And why was he angry? Because his, his intention 
was not that the servant should keep it or that the servant should make profit out of it. In other words, the territory that he has conquered, he wants us to expand it. He wants us to spread it all over. He wants us to spread it all over. And so that's the trust of our team for the month of September. You know, I know that in the first three days we try to pray, you know, we talk about well, I want to occupy my place, I want to occupy my office, I want to occupy all of that. That's very good. But you know that the ultimate thing in the heart of the master is that he wants us to occupy not for ourselves. Occupy for who? For him. For him. Because the scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15, that this man who died, he died for all. So that everyone who now wants to live through him should not live for themselves anymore, but should live for the one who died for them. And did what? And rose again. And rose again. Can I tell you that if you are born again, if you are saved, if you fail to occupy for him, something else will occupy your life. Something else will do what? Will occupy your life. There's no middle ground. Something else will occupy your life. Jesus, when he gave those 10 minors, he said, go and make profit. Go and do business until I come. Can I tell you that the business that brings joy to the heart of the master is the business of soul winning. Praise the Lord. The business of what? Soul winning. Because there's no profit. Is it money you want to bring to God? Silver and gold belongs to him. There's nothing that you have that you think you want to give to God that he doesn't have. But God is hungry for souls. He wants those souls that are still under the dominion of Satan to come back to him. Because Jesus died for all and is waiting to receive all. And through us, there shall be profit of soul winning in Jesus' name. Now, what does it mean? What is the implication of occupying for him? Number one is a call to take responsibility. It's a call to take responsibility. It's a call to make profit for the master. You know the tragedy of the fig tree. In Luke chapter 13, 6 to 9, the tragedy of the fig tree, that the fig tree was planted among other trees in the garden. And the owner of the garden came back inspecting and then found out that that fig tree was not producing fruit. And the owner of the garden became angry and said, I have been coming inspecting you. For these past three years, expecting you to produce fruit and have found none. I said, I'm going to cut you down because you are just occupying space for nothing. Praise the Lord. You're occupying space for nothing. You will have had me, you know, mention this, that I think during the course of sea worship, that the rent you pay for the space you occupy is service. Praise the Lord. The rent... You pay for what? The space you are occupying here on earth is what? Service to the master. And there are so many of us that are owing our rent. <laughs> How many of us love our landlord to chase us out because we are not paying rent? Can you raise your upper hand? You want the landlord to chase you out because you are not paying rent. But you don't know that some of us, the angels are waiting to chase us out. It's just that Jesus, who died on our behalf, is still pleading. Please still permit her one more year. Just like the, the one who was taking care of the garden said, just give it one more. One more what? <laughs> we pray for long life. Oh. We pray for long life. But let me tell you, long life is not automatic. Are you hearing me? It's not automatic. It's by mercy. Is by mercy. There are some of us that the angels are saying, Master, let me cut her down. Let me cut him down. The Jesus is saying, no, just one more year. Let 
I, let me just still not sure. I, I'm going to send my servant to preach. I'm going to send other messages to her so that she will know that the reason why she's occupying this space is so that she can serve me. And if another year you come and she's still occupying this space and not producing fruit, what do you do? Then I give you permission to cut her down or cut him down. May we not be cut down. So of what profit are you to God? I need to ask you today, of what profit are you to God? Occupying space. Of what profit are you coming to near Ute Baptist Church? Sunday in, Sunday out. Of what profit are you? Are you just occupying that seat without producing fruit? Without anything to show for it? You come you enjoy, you know, good press worship. You enjoy all kinds of things. And all you do is to just come. You enjoy the AC. Enjoy this and go. Not nothing. Not, not a soul. Not a commitment. Not a sacrifice. To say, God, I'm having this property. I'm having that property. And they are talking about doing the work of mission. What is this pro property for? Is it not for you? I'm only keeping it in trust for you. I'd like to ask you today of what profit? Remember that hymn writer, must I go and empty handed? Not one soul with which to greet the master. It's a call to responsibility. I won't have time to explain to you. There are three kinds of people in the church. There are those who trouble the church. There are those who tame the church. And there are those who bless the tray in the church. If you read 1 Timothy 1.20, there were those who were troubling the church. Third John 9-10, to there was a man called Diotrephes him in the church. But there was Demetrius taught John 12. This in the tray in the church. So it's a call to responsibility to seek for the master. To save for the master. To be involved in sowing for the work of the master. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17. Let me have that. Zechariah 1 17. Look at what the scripture says. It said with prosperity. I'm going to spread. My cities abroad. My cities abroad. Zechariah. Zechariah. Not Zephaniah. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17. It said with prosperity. I'm going to spread my cities abroad. God is talking about his, he wants to spread his cities. His cities is the church. I want to spread it abroad. You don't find Zechariah 1, 17. I want to spread my cities abroad. And that's why the mission minister told us to plant the three churches that we have done thus far, buy properties for this and that, that we have spent, you know, about 68 million already. So that tells you that it takes money. It takes money. It takes money to do the work of mission. At long last, we have the career 117. <laughs> I bet, let us read it. <laughs> Cry yet, say, don't say the Lord of hosts. Don't say who? Don't say who? My cities. My cities. God is not into building houses here and there. He said I will build my church. The only building that God is focusing on is what? The church. Matthew 16, 18. I will build my church. He said, he said my cities through prosperity. Don't take it away. Shall ye be spread abroad and the Lord shall ye comfort Zion. 
and shall yet choose Jerusalem. My cities, my cities, true prosperity. I, I remember the other day we were talking about something, about what we're spending in a particular mission. I said, just shouting hallelujah will not uh, produce it. You have to bring out money. You remember I said it. All right. So it's a call to responsibility. Number two, it's a call to reposition yourself. A call to reposition yourself. For a long time, these servants, as it appeared as if they were not occupied. They were not engaged. But the master now engaged them. Engaged them. Engaged them. It means that the master moved them from just being general purpose servants to becoming specific servants that were meant to do certain things. Move them from idleness to making them to be engaged for him. And just like Paul had to appeal on behalf of Onesimus to Philemon. He said, this is your servant, Philemon, Vasilemon, only one chapter, Vasilemon. He said, this is your servant, which in time past was to be unprofitable. But now, now what? Profitable to thee. In other words, there was a time Onesimus was unprofitable to his master. I don't know whether before today you have been unprofitable to your master. Will you tell the master today, I want to be profitable to you. So it's a call to reposition yourself as a child of God. As the one that God has saved. And number three, it's a call to restrain the enemy. It's a call to say, devil, you will no longer have the northeast of Nigeria. Because the territory we fail to occupy is the territory the enemy have taken over. You know, in the midst of fear here and there, we went to Gombe to plant a church. Praise the Lord. There was something I didn't tell you. Because I didn't want to scare you. Our team flew to Jaws. And their plan was to return back to Lagos. And then take a flight to Gombe. And the flight was cancelled. But we needed to plant a church in Gombe. Rather than returning to Lagos, <laughs> the leader said, I'm going to go by road from Jos to Gombe. Went from Jos to Gombe. Led the team, you know, in Gombe to plant the church. Return through that same road. Gombe, Baoshi, to Joss. How many of you have had the news of what is happening in the recent time? That along that same road. Along that same road. But God gave us grace to go and to return. Because the enemy has to be restrained. Praise the Lord. The enemy has to be restrained. Because the kingdoms of this world must become the kingdom of our God. And of his dear son, Jesus Christ. Can I tell you something about this issue of occupying? I want to, I know my time is gone, but let me quickly read to you. Second Samuel chapter 23, 11 and 12. Second Samuel 23, 11 and 12. I will tell you the story. He said, after him was Shammah, the son of Agay, the Hararite. And the Philistines were gathered together in the, into a troop. Where was a piece of ground full of lentils, and the people fled from the Philistines. Verse 12. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines, and the Lord wrought a great victory. Let me tell you the story. Now, the land, a territory that belonged to Israelites. The enemy invaded it. And this territory that they invaded, what the children of Israel planted was lentils, 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 vegetable. Are you hearing me? Something that can be easily overlooked. And the enemy invaded it. And when the children of Israel saw that the enemy had invaded it, they fled because they were afraid of the enemy. But Shama, one person, said even though what we are planted here is vegetable because it is the land of our ancestors I won't allow them to take it over and the Bible says he stood in the midst of the place 
he defended a ground occupied by vegetables, not occupied by cocoa or occupied by gold. We are not talking about uh, a ground occupied, you know, by oil. We are talking about a ground that what you have on it is what vegetable. But Shamat said, "This is the land of our ancestors. I won't give it up." I won't give it. Even though others have run away, I will not run. He stood in the midst of the crown. And he defended it. To say, our, our mandate is to occupy it. I won't allow the enemy to take over this territory. Even though what we planted here, they are just vegetables. We will not give it up. We won't give it up. And Shama to tomorrow is remembered. Praise the Lord. Those who fled... You don't have their record. Their names are not inconsequential. But one man that stood to occupy just a small place, a small place planted with vegetables till tomorrow there is, his name is written in the eternal book of God. I don't know about you. I don't know about me. Where will your name be written? What will be written concerning you? Of what allocation with the master said, hey, yes, he, you know, she, this is what she did. Why she was at New Haiti Baptist Church. Through her, through him. Yes, we went to Ghana. Through her, through him, we went to Yobe. Through her, through him, we went to Castina. Where bandits are ravaging. Through her, through him, we went to Zamfara. You know, what will be written about you? Must I go and empty handed? I know that you have, you have um, a hymn that you have planned for this. But I'm changing that. So must I go and empty handed? So did you come to the keyboard? And, and we are going to respond. We are going to pray. And, and we have decision slip here that will be given to us. So master, I'm not going to go and empty handed. I, I'm not going to go and greet you without something, something consequential. I want my name to be in the eternal book. That I'm part of those who occupy for you. I'm part of those who occupy territory for you. I'm part of those that you use even to conquer, to tell the enemy, enough is enough. God is calling us today that this month, he is re-emphasizing again. The reason why you are alive is to occupy for him. The reason why you are in that company is to occupy for him. The reason why you are doing that business is to occupy for him. The reason why you have that money in your account is to occupy for him. And I want to ask you today, will you go and empty handed? We're going to take that hymn and then we're going to pray. Sleep will be given to every one of us. And then you are going to make decision. You're going to make decision. You write your name. You've heard about the work of mission. Whatever you need to give, if you, you need to give a property, you indicate it there. Whatever amount, whichever day you know you need to redeem it, you also put it. All right? Please come quickly. Let's take that hymn. Circumstances. If you have not received a sleep, please raise up your hand. The ushers will give it to you. Please. Oh. 
the background to this hymn has to do with a man who was on a sick bed. And that man, even though he was old, he knew that he was going to die because a priest came to him to tell him to prepare and go. And then he remembered how he got the call maybe 50 years before that time to go and become an evangelist. But he went about doing his own business, doing his own thing. And then the maker of his life now told him it is time to go. And the man was now saying, so is that the way I'm going to go? So I'm going to meet my maker empty-handed. So he started crying. And when the priest was now relating the story, then the hymn writer now captured that and put it into a hymn. I told you that the, the rent you and I need to pay for the space we are occupying is service to the master. You have a slip in your hand. What will that service be? What will your commitment be? What will be this, your, your own decision? To say between now and the end of September or between now and the end of October or between now and the end of the year or maybe by the grace of God every month I will be setting this aside for the work of mission. For the work of mission. You need to do that. So we take the next one now. to occupy for you. I, I know maybe I've been living for myself. I've been living to satisfy myself, to pursue my own dream, to pursue my own agenda. The money I've been gathering is all about me. Me, myself, and I. But Lord, you have spoken to me today. I don't want to be like that fig tree that will be cut down. They'll be cut down because it's not producing fruit. I don't want to meet with you empty handed. You have saved me. And kept me here to occupy. That's the reason why you left me here. So that I can occupy for you. So that I can be of service to you. So that I can be useful to you. Let my life be useful to you. Let my wealth be useful to you. Let the properties, in fact, they are not mine. They are yours. You only gave them to me to take custody of them. Lord, help me to use this for your service. Your service alone. So that when the time comes, I will not meet you empty-handed. Let's take the last verse. Hold on, please. Before we take it, just hold on. There are some of you here that need to respond beyond the issue of giving to mission. To say, I want to go. I don't know how I'm going to go. Maybe some of one person or the other that God has been calling you into the ministry, you've been struggling. And I tell you that many years ago when I gave 
I answered the call to ministry. I didn't know what the future holds. But can I tell you, I'm standing before you here today without any regret. Because God has been faithful. God has been faithful. So if that speaks about you, just come to the altar, either the gallery, wherever. Let's take that. your hands towards this one. There's someone here, I don't have the time to minister, but someone here, you're having difficulty in breathing. If that is you, wherever you are, put your right hand on your heart right now. Lord, we thank you. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. Lord, I rebuke that spirit behind that difficulty in breathing. I rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever it is that is blocking Lord, the organ, the part of that organ that is meant for breathing, I command that blockage to be taken away in the mighty name of Jesus. Baba Olumide, please come and pray for these ones and pray over us. We take the refrain again. We take the refrain again. Thank you for this message that you have sent to us. Thank you for your messenger. And thank you for the time of it. While we are promoting missions in this church. Again, Lord, we thank you for this far. You have helped this local church. And thank you for how Father still you are going to help this church be glorified in the name of Jesus. Thank you for every of your children that has responded in one specific or particular way. Lord, bless their responses today in the name of Jesus and bring their responses to fruition in the name of Jesus. Lord, cause it that this church will never grow weary. I say again, man of God, your anointing on daily basis is refreshed in the name of Jesus. And everyone that lifts his hands up in this church, in this ministry, both those, those are here local and those that are in the diaspora, none of you will be tired in the name of Jesus. Glory to God Almighty. For these individuals who are answering specifically to some call to the mission work, I ask that God is going to uphold you. Whatever is envisioning you to do, he will show it to you clearly. And as you, as you seek consultation 
and get clarity there will be way forward in the name of Jesus you will not be stranded the purpose of God concerning you shall be established in the name of Jesus Christ you will never regret any decision you are making in furthering his purpose upon your life in the name of Jesus glory to God almighty in Jesus Christ's name we have prayed.